welcome back to the top eight top cut round here at versus games for the 1k lore Kana competition we are seeing our first match here and that is going to be a familiar face nikita made it to the top cut against john l here in the top eight and Nikita and John both with four wins. Nikita was able to uh, not get any draws, but was able to kind of get two losses, unfortunately. John, one draw, one loss. Kind of puts them very similar in what they've been able to put out today. Uh, so we should see a very, very fair and uh, even matchup going into this first round of top eight. Pretty exciting stuff here. We are going to see, obviously, we've already seen Nikita's deck. Um, we are going to see some familiar uh, archetypes here. Uh, again, the most popular decks are the most popular decks for a reason but uh, going to be pretty fun here as the players are setting up. So it looks like uh, while we get set up here, um, we will just announce to you the entirety of the top eight. We got Jonathan, uh, Mark, Nikita, Nathaniel, Jerry, John, Frank, and Jeff all getting into top eight here. Uh, so Nikita is going to be on that Amber Steel Song deck, and it looks like John is going to be playing Another familiar favorite. And you have two players that are definitely definitely going to see uh, some similar styles coming out of these decks. I believe that this could be a mirror match coming into this one. I have to get my deck list in front of me, but I believe we should be looking at a mirror match coming up of, of Ruby Amethyst again. Uh, uh, Nikita is on the Amber Steel. Amber Steel. Okay, so we. Okay, so then I'm actually gonna not say what John's on because <laughs> I don't want. I'm gonna wait till I get my deck list just so I don't mess that up. But yeah, I, I, I believe he is on. A, it is, this is going to be a mirror match, but it's going to be Amber Steel. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we do have the Amber Steel and Nikita, and I am. I saw something out of John. I just wasn't sure. All right, exactly. and we're starting off. We're gonna ink a Cinderella and play a Stitch New Dog. We're into this first game of top eight. Okay, so it looks like we have a Captain Hook being inked here and a Captain Hook from our opponent. Captain for Captain. Seen a little couple shinies. I wonder if John's deck is full of them. Mm, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, gonna ink that Rapunzel and play that Lantern. Will we see Ooh. turn three Rockstar Stitch? We see, I believe that's in hand, so we will be seeing that, and that's a huge play. Gonna ink that Captain Hook here and Lantern from our opponent. John as well. Seeing a little bit of reflection in the mirror here. As we put the aerial down, we may not actually have that Stitch Rockstar then. Okay, we are going to hit at Swords going into the hand here. Look. What will happen here? This is a tough matchup. The Amber Steel match, uh, mirror match, again, I mentioned this earlier, feels super awkward. Um, sometimes uh, making good calls is really going to be uh, what is going to make or break uh, these players here. Uh, making the right call as far as who to, who to get rid of on the board, um, when to play your songs, when to sing versus paying with ink, etc. Um, so he's going to simply draw off that Simba and discard a lantern here. Uh, I think does he, he's not going to quest here because of that hook, so he's going to simply pass. John here doesn't have, doesn't seem to have a quick answer for this turn three. He's still deciding on what he wants to do. So doesn't show me that he has like a great selection mm -hmm. going into that one, which is, you know, not really what you want to see in the top eight round. You kind of want to be flush. Able to put another lantern down and play an aerial. Uh, had to get rid of his smash though, which would have possibly been nice to get rid of that aerial singer so that way he wasn't his opponent isn't able to kind of use that same trick against him mm -hmm. isn't able to hit big but is able to get a be our guess which hey i mean i'll take anything when i'm grabbing with aerial honestly. absolutely um again though at, at worst it's inkable right yeah it's it's, it's an inkable song that's pretty rare um so that feels good regardless 100 percent uh gonna see what nikita's plan is here he's gonna ink the be our guest Tap down three plus, there it is. and we do shift into that rock star stitch. That is going to be very comfortable. It looks like he might just have two additional grab your swords in hand, and that is it. Uh, that is still a big, big play. 
control. Uh, if he sees his opponent uh, commit just a little bit more, that might definitely be the play. He looks like he's not going to sing uh, with the air. Oh, he is. He is going to sing with that aerial, so that gets rid of the hook threat, which is what I would have wanted to get rid of. And then you have the uh, aerial having two damage. Hopefully there's not a Rapunzel coming down to benefit off that two damage, but we'll, we'll see what he's able to put down. Assuming there isn't a Rapunzel, um, that Ariel can now no longer safely trade into anything, and he is going to have quested with that Stitch and that Simba bringing Nikita up to four lore. An early start here from Nikita has a pretty, and that again, the tempo swing is gonna kind of go in his favor because uh, you have that Rockstar Stitch. Uh, being able to draw cards off these cheaper plays. Meanwhile, John is going to ink that BR guest and go from there. All right, looks like, again, second lantern, pretty good. Will we see anything here from John? We will see the baby Tinkerbell which will at, least, at the very worst help him cycle cards, at best help him shift into Big Tink, um, which can be really relevant uh, with the uh, willpower levels on the opponent's side of the field. It puts Ariel into, excuse me, Swords range, um, makes Stitch a lot more vulnerable with the four willpower versus the five. We've seen that be relevant already with Cinderella. Simba coming out in Bodyguard haven't seen that nearly as much today as I thought I would see, uh, but uh, classic uh, Amber play coming out of him, mm -hmm. and I, it, it, it's good for a reason. It works really well. Seeing the grab your swords to finish off that aerial and put a little bit of extra damage on that Tinkerbell, another great uh, play. And then you have that Simba to protect you in case things get a little bit uh, a little bit weird with that Tinkerbell in case he does that shift. And then Nikita, again, being able to simply quest up here uh, to 8 lore, which is really great. Um, and, and again, this Tinkerbell, um, its 4 willpower is one of its best traits, so now with that extra 2 damage from that Swords, it cannot comfortably attack or in, it use its ability even, um, really kind of uh, taking away a lot of its power there. And then four ink with a Hades coming down. So, seeing uh, that card again makes some uh, headway. Uh, that was Nikita earlier that was able to use that. Uh, I'm sorry, not Nikita earlier. That was uh, Jerry earlier uh, that was able to get that the combo off with the Hades. And now we're seeing it again out of John. So very popular today on, on the field. Yeah, Hades is a. Uh Definitely a controversial card. Again, playing extra uninkables in a deck that already has a lot of songs in it is a little bit scary, but if it doesn't screw you over in your curve, it is so powerful in the mid to late game, being able to pull those cards out of your discard pile and bringing those threats that your opponent gets rid of right back. Now, again, Nikita's board state in lore is much stronger here, but that is something that could potentially turn the tides if he is not careful. Um, we see something like a double grab your sword or something like that and uh, immediately John is back in this game. And we saw that Nikita uh, used both of his grab your swords, so he doesn't have as much removal now, so he's kind of hoping that he did the trick and now he can kind of coast off of that to the end. Gonna play the aerial. He unfortunately does whiff there, putting a surfer stitch and a couple other good cards to the bottom. Gonna sing that second one, get rid of almost the entirety of John's board once again, again putting two damage on the aerial. Really, uh, putting a damper on its ability to trade or sit comfortably sing songs or do anything really uh, and then of course just getting rid of those two other characters um, and then we're just going to quest again up to 13 I mean Nikita had, is kind of a well oiled machine at this point John really needs something drastic here to turn the tide it really needs to be that double grab your swords play to kind of wipe that board clean leaving him with just a stitch and that way his aerial can trade with it and he can just wipe your hands and say okay let's start again let's try it again uh, but I think right now it doesn't doesn't look he's got the grab your sword so he's That's able to good. do a little bit of damage which is super important but still not enough and then there it the is double. double grab your sword we just we manifested <laughs> yet again <laughs> Yet wow. again, ladies and gentlemen. That was the play there, but he did have to sing it with Ariel, so Stitch will sing or live another day. Uh, but, man, what a great use of Grab Your Swords. And to see it back-to-back -back and multiple times today get used in that fashion, it's pretty, I mean, great combo. Yeah, great Stitch combo. is now, unfortunately, in range of uh, Big Tink. Oh. Going to bring out the Grab Your Cannon quest to 16. Nikita's saying, I don't care. Now that was a good top deck, and he really and he, since Nikita's playing in top deck mode right now, that is huge for him to get anything that he can use. And right now, 
Oh, no. He was already ready for the big tink, and trust me, so was I. I saw six. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know what's coming. But he's able to keep him out on the field again. So that's going to bring him all the way up to 19 oh, more with a Simba guard. on the fl- field. He's extremely relevant here. Unless John grabs something like a grab your sword or a smash, I think Nikita might simply win here. He's at 19 now. And, uh... That's not what you want to see as if you're John. Yeah, 19 Lord of Zero uh, is rough in any deck, but uh, unless you're Ruby Amethyst, it's really hard to come back from that. Uh, it needs to be a spot removal, and most of these don't have it. Going to sing a whole new world with Stitch Rockstar here. Just really hoping for anything at this point. Uh, it would have to be something big like a grab your swords into a fire the cannons or smash. It uh, does not... Seem like he got it. Yep, so. and John is going to scoop, and we are into game number two. Nikita taking game one pretty handedly here at Versus Games. Yeah, that was a great match, and a very uh, a very traditional, classic aggro version of the Amber Stom- uh, Steel Song, and yeah. I love that version of it. When he- And Nikita seems to be playing that, and that seems to be his, his, his way of playing that deck, and I really resonate with that because that's exactly how I play that deck, and I prefer it that way. I think it's uh, a much more... Uh, fast-paced, enjoyable experience for me as the player, uh, and you know, as a viewer, I definitely got to say I, I enjoy I enjoy seeing sometimes just how aggressive and quick you can knock it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, like I said, when I play Amber Steel, I definitely tend to lean that way as well. I play a lot of like the one-drop Lilo. I completely cut out um, my other uninkables like Hades in exchange for much more aggressive strategies that way. And uh, it's worked out pretty well so far for me. But again, I see that the, the value of the mid-range um, element of Amber Steel, it can kind of go wherever you need it to. But I think in the mirror match, going aggressive like uh, we saw Nikita do just now is the right play. 100%. And I, I think that if, without answers, what, there's nothing he can do. There's really not. I mean, you, you saw that they had the lack of, uh, of the, you know, other than that double grab your swords, it was really hard uh, for... John to really come back when Nikita was that far off. But uh, to bring up your point about uh, playing the Lilo, that's something I have not seen from any of the Amber Steel that I've personally seen today, any Lilos whatsoever. So I definitely think that the that's interesting considering that seemed to be just such an absolute staple in the color. Yeah, absolutely. Again, again, we have another deck um, here with Nikita that is in the top eight with Cinderella. I mean... Yeah, and Cinderella seems like uh, a card that maybe you will start seeing a little bit more of. Uh, probably when you start seeing more, uh, you know, in, in tournaments like this and other tournaments around the, the country, where you see her more and you see the value of that extra singer, and, and it just it's kind of hard to ignore uh, when you go into these newer decks and newer styles of decks that really are going to help synergize more with princesses. That's mm-hmm. just going to take it to another level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm really looking forward to some of the future cards coming forward with the Battle Princesses strategy. Um, so it's really fun to see that already kind of starting to peek its head a little bit with people experimenting with cards like Cinderella um, alongside Ariel. So we are going to get right here into game number two of this round. John is going to go first, going to ink that beast and play out a Stitch New Dog and pass the turn. Got to grab your swords in hand from John. So that is definitely going to be a clutch way to handle some of these smaller threats. And Nikita is clearly keen on getting uh, threats on board and going wide. Yes. So he's going to ink that Surfer Stitch, play that Simba right away, draw off of it. And it's going to be curious to see what he discards here. Yeah, he's got a lot of good uh, cards in hand, so you don't necessarily want to get rid of anything, you yeah. know, but that's the double-edged sword of Simba. Sometimes you, you draw and you're like, ah, oh, it's an easy choice, and then other times you're like, oh my goodness, what do I do now? Seems like it was a pretty decent, easy choice there. Going to just throw away that Surfer Stitch. Not going to see that for at least four turns, so that's not really much of a problem here. Going to play that Lantern on turn two for John, and will we see a turn three Stitch Rockstar? That could be a huge swing in John's turn. And it looks like he does have it! Oh, that's big. He put it to the front, so you already know he's got that planned ready for the next turn. And we didn't see that added to Nikita. He chose to opt to play the Aerial third turn instead, even though he had the Stitch Rockstar, and it worked out well for him. So I'm curious if if John's going to take a, a little bit of a hint from that or if he's going to go ahead and rush into it. I assume he's going to rush into it considering he's putting his Stitch out there ready to be attacked. It won't take him out, but still yeah. putting damage on your Rockstar unnecessarily seems a little risky for just one lore. No, absolutely. And uh, I have to say, um, I've never lost 
Oh my and god. And that's why you don't put out the stitch early sometimes. You kind of save it a little bit. But he had the opportunity to put the three out uh, the three turn rock star out there, so he had to go for it. But man, that fire the cannon is will make tragic. You pay for it. That's rough. At least he's gonna get the turn three aerial here, gonna simply be able to hopefully uh, get another ink, and then maybe he has another stitch and he can shift it to a turn four. That would be okay, but man, that really sucks. Able to grab um, and grab your sword, so that starts to lessen that wound a little bit. At least he's getting some value out of this play. What I started to say before um, Nikita so rudely killed Stitch's new dog <laughs> uh, is uh, I've never lost on a turn three Stitch Rockstar, and whenever I face one, I've never won. So okay. it's, uh, it's a little tough. To and, deal with. and he knew it, so he said, know what? Not in my house. We're not doing that. I yeah. know what that can do. I think that's a really smart play here from Nikita, recognizing the potential of that threat. Inking and then going to go ahead and play Ariel. Just singing left and right from these from these. Oh, another oh, big hits coming out of Nikita. He's got grab your sword and whole new world. Double whole new world. I think because it's two whole new worlds, I take one of them because I don't want both of them at the bottom of my deck. That's fair. And, uh, he's I think... gonna take the, the grab your swords. He's opting for that damage. He knows the deck he's going against. Maybe hoping that John plays the whole new world for him, or maybe just doesn't want to have to refuel his hand because he knows what that can do. Gonna quest for two here with his little guys, and uh, you know I think that's actually a very legitimate and valid uh, thought. There is that you your opponent in the mirror match is it's a question of you don't want to be the one to have to play a whole new world, right? Because then the other person's gonna get it on fresh ink and uh, you generally are going to have an advantage there. The difference is Nikita has Ariel in play. Yeah. So I'm very kind of surprised with you that he did not choose to take that. Um, maybe he has considering some... it, both of them are now at the bottom. As he's not seeing those. Yeah. Can I play the Hades here? That could be huge. Going to get back that Stitch new dog. Very good. So he's not going to completely Oh, he's going to ink it, though. He says he doesn't need that Stitch new dog. Cause, just I mean, to, to be fair... Um, he he's gonna sing with the, and then he also will have enough with the lantern next turn to simply play Stitch Rockstar from hand. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe just having the the ability to play it third turn is what's important, but being able to play outside of that, just playing it outright, might be better. Uh huh. I have to agree. All right, gonna ink a beast here. Interesting. Double, Double lantern. Air. Some ambiance on the set. You would think that the beast would have maybe saved to come down on the other lantern, stalling him out a little bit more. But I mean, the double lantern play. I'm curious if that helps him out a lot more. He really is leaning into putting some stuff on. That the is board. a lot of ramp going fully, fully aggressive here. Uh, again, though, aerial at two is not a fun sight. And he wasn't able to capitalize on that placement either. He didn't have a two drop or a one to put down even. So he put two lanterns on the field and wasn't able to put anything else on the field. It kind of feels like a stall turn. Throwing away that new, uh, brand new, uh, whole new world, excuse me, brand new world, I mean, same thing. <laughs> but um, uh, I hope it's not a mistake here. It's really going to depend on what that card is in Nikita's hand. Because if it's something huge, like a Stitch Rockstar, I think it's justified. If yeah. it's not, I think you're playing a little bit too cautious and you have to go for that... Uh, you have to go for that whole new world yeah. because uh, this deck is infamous for falling to um, top deck, you know? Yeah, 100%. Another grab your swords. A lot of his removal being used really early on from both of these players. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, we're going to have uh, Ariel here with the ability to sing. He has that swords in hand, and he just has a Simba. Again, I, I, I have to say, I think... Might I think this might have been a misplay yeah. here. Ooh, oh, a top deck grabber. Well, I, I, that's going to be a hard choice, isn't it? But <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hate to see that. You just lost both of your removal. Uh, that's rough. I mean, you almost don't even draw with Simba when you only have the one card in hand like that. This is John's opportunity to capitalize here. He has 100%. Stitch Rockstar out on the field. Uh, your, his opponent is in, he knows for a fact is in top deck mode. He, his opponent doesn't have many threats at all. So we'll, I guess we'll see here what happens. We're going to play down Tinkerbell here. Um, yeah, I mean, at the same time, Tinkerbell's going to let you cycle cards. I, th I really wish that Nikita would have picked that whole new one. For, I, I really think that that might be one of the bigger m mistakes out of out of the matches that we've seen today just because I see it seems like he's so stalled out right now and that would have been so much fuel to his hand and his team his opponent seems to have enough resources where it wouldn't have hurt me too much to add to you know add four to three if as long as I get seven from one yeah 
Are we going to see the big tink? Okay, no, we're going to see the Hades again. In this situation, the Hades is so good, he right? He chose to get rid of another grab your sword. So I think Nikita is out of grab your swords completely, and I think John is down to only one in the deck. So both players are way early oh, on. Oh, top decking the whole new world here from Nikita. Wow. Doesn't feel to have to spend all that ink to do it. But that is actually crazy because he just negated the Hades he just played. He picked up, John picking up the Hades from his graveyard, uh, basically initiating that endless loop. But Nikita says, nope, that's not happening. And Nikita actually pulling a grab your sword, so I must have miscounted. He must have used it only three and has his fourth and only last one in hand while uh, it looks like, yeah, it looks like John doesn't necessarily have his fourth uh, grab your swords in hand. So... I don't see... Did, did you see a big tink in John's hand by chance? I didn't see one way or the other, but I didn't... I don't think he does have it. Uh, shouldn't an Akita's aerial be banished? It didn't put two damage on it from the first swords. I also thought that when I saw it, and I wasn't sure if I was seeing things, so that might have just been an oversight, and sometimes that is, that is on the players to really be on top of that the most, but I do think that you might be right on that. But at this point, it was eventually banished, so yeah. I don't think it's relevant anymore. Yeah. Um, okay, going to play that Stitch Surfer, though, and he's going to draw the two cards, simply quest for two, go to three. Uh, it's really going to come down to what Nikita drew off that whole new world, but Stitch Surfer is a great start here. Both players at three lore now. Wanting to see if we can get... A lit, I mean, a little bit more board presence out of John, and it's it's going to be tough to come back on knowing that it is down to only one grab your swords. Even though Nikita does have that one grab your swords, it will take out the Hades. It'll damage the tank a little bit, but it's not barely doing nothing. He to could that. even trade. He could even attack the tank and not die with Simba if he really wanted to. Um, that would probably be the good play right there. So at least you're getting rid of two, and he might be doing that right now, taking the two damage. It looks like on. Simba putting the two damage on Tinkerbell, going to use five, obviously for grab your swords at that point, yep. Again, though, that Stitch Surfer is just so hard to deal yeah. with. I mean, you're, he's still at, he's a 4-6 now. Uh, he's going to be questing for two every turn. Nikita really has to have some bigger threat here. I'm thinking like a big, uh, big Captain Hook or a maybe a Stitch Surfer of his own. Draw Buff. that Simba card. Now he's another choice. What do he wants to get rid of here? Again, going wide with these little guys, I don't think is going to work once John is this established, right? So it's going to be, it's not necessarily impossible, but like a big tank really hurts you here. Um, again, you said that swords is not as much of an issue anymore because of how many have been played on both sides, but there's still a lot of removal. You still have smashes to worry about. Like, you really want something stronger than a Captain Hook and a Simba here. I don't know if. Nikita is running any smashes in his deck. That's true. We forgot about, um, we talked about this before. He's playing the Fire of the Cannons instead. He did top deck one, so he's down to just one in the deck now. I really think that at this point he's down to maybe that being his only removal left in the deck aside from With, a giant Tinkerbell. Yeah, I think you might be correct on that. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see, especially as John's building up his board state here. He's really threatening to put Nikita out on a clock. Um, so yeah and it looks like he has another whole new world in hand so he has the ability to recharge if needed Nikita choosing what he wants to do now it's going to be and now Nikita is faced with the uphill battle against John as John has two big bodies on the field uh, threatening four lore but just how threatening, you know, the Tinkerbell to being able to take out multiple and then able to answer back with his own Stitch Surfer, which is great. That at least gets him some card draw, puts another big body on the forward for Nikita, which is huge. He definitely needs that. Going to ink that Rapunzel there, play the Stitch, new dog. If he's going to go wide like this, he needs to um, start questing aggressively, I think. Um, I, don't, I don't hate that, though, trading in into the stitch. He now can't now he can't attack. Now that stitch can't attack anything. My biggest thought is though, you are just priming John here for a Rapunzel. Uh, right? I was just gonna say if, if John has Rapunzel in hand, that's an easy play right here, because that's three cards drawn, you're keeping him alive longer. It's it's kinda hard to put that much damage and not take him out. <laughs> oh, that is painful. Oh, just when you think one's done, he's got a big brother that you didn't even know existed. If he has the Rapunzel here in addition, because I don't think he's inked yet, that um, 
yeah, that's uh, that's going to feel really bad to have traded two of your characters into something just to have it healed and draw him cards. He's now questing for six. So he's going to quest for four, go to seven. Questing for six next turn. We're immediately on a two-turn clock. He's got answers in his hand, Nikita does, for what's going on right now. But we're not done yet. We're still playing another stitch out of John, and now we pass over. And now we, he, he has five lore in play, right? Or I'm sorry, seven. Yeah. He has the second surfer stitch there at the bottom. So, yeah, he is threatening a two-turn clock now. The thing and is, with all that removal gone, like, what does Nikita do here? That's what I'm saying. He's He's got so so much ground to cover and not much to do it that's another reason why having those smashes in place of maybe uh, uh, there's a few different cards that maybe run three of and run like two smashes instead and and just have a little bit of backup just in case because like right now oh man how how great a smash would be yeah you know what i mean absolutely. or two smashes even he could just he could he could totally fix all the issues on the board right now uh but instead he's got He's got to figure out how he's going to do it in a creative way. Coming down with a big Tinkerbell, though, so that's a that's a nice one. Using the little stitch to take out Big, sti big Stitch, that seems like a great value out of the tiny guy. So uh, that is definitely a good play, uh, but it doesn't completely solve everything. He's not done. He's taken out the Tinkerbell with the other Stitch Surfer. Nikita really cleaning up that board quite nicely, actually. Yeah, and uh, again, we're probably going to see maybe a retaliation here from Surfer Stitch, but that's a dangerous thing for John to do, right? Because if he does that and take and trades the Surfer Stitches, um, it will be a trade proper because Tinkerbell can simply attack next turn, and then you have to deal with that two damage. So you're actually talking about removing two of your things. Right now we're talking Stitch New Dog, but it, he can't comfortably play anything with two or less willpower right now. Um, though I think you kind of have to uh, trade into that uh, surfer Stitch, because you have no removal otherwise. I mean, John also is not running a ton of removal left. Yeah, they're both they're both down very low. I actually don't know if John is running a uh, any copies of Smash. I have not seen any yet though, so I would I'd venture a guess probably not, but I'm not sure. Shifting into Rockstar here though, that's an interesting thing. Gonna bring that lore counter back up. Gonna draw off of Rockstar here with Hook. Exhausting. Try and go wide. Is he going to get another one drop to keep that train going? Doesn't look gonna like he had the, the top deck that he wanted, so he's not going to be able to Big draw. tank, though. That's not that's not bad. Now he can uh, attack that surfer stitch next turn with Captain Hook if, the, if his opponent doesn't deal with it. And that's, uh, that one damage on Tink is huge because now it can't uh, safely get away from that surfer stitch. It can't safely get away from uh, the other Tinkerbell, so definitely a great move out of John to help kind of fire back at Nikita, but I think Nikita's still got some answers. He's not done yet. No, I actually... did. He did. No, actually, never mind. I was going to say I would have attacked with the big tank, but he played that this turn, so yep. he can't. That would have been excellent, though, because then he could have done the two damage to that aerial there, but yeah, I think that is the right play, uh, just attacking into that server stitch, but now, even bo better than before, if, like you were saying, big tank tries to, re tries to return the deal... Um, that big tank will die in the process. Yeah, I think that right now, John has a little bit of the lead, uh, not just in lore, but just in tempo of the of the match right now. I think that it's going to be our guest. I wonder what he's fishing for at this point. What, do you, what would you be looking for? Definitely uh, Rockstar and Surfer Stitches, for okay. sure. Or big tanks. Um, you know, your big guys. You're this far into the game, your opponent is well established with multiple enormous threats on the board. You're going to want your big guys at this point. Um, and that's why Be Our Guest um, is great in the late game. Definitely. He's going to get the Rockstar Stitch, so he's got, he got the draw, potentially, that he wanted. I, I don't think... know if it's going to be... Uh, without a shift target, he's not going to be able to play and use it right away. So it still it still doesn't really 100% solve his problem right now. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much damage. I think it's one damage on that stitch. So, I mean, realistically, I'm taking that Tinkerbell, swinging it into the surfer stitch, and then taking out the Captain Hook. Yeah, I think that is the best play here. Unfortunately, oh, he's going to take out the Captain Hook. That's actually super smart. Um, Put the damage If on. he has, a, like, fire the cannons or something. Interesting. 
or he has seven damage on that. So does he have another big tank? Another big tank to shift onto the big oh, tank. Oh, he does. Is he gonna shift it? Is that what he did? No, he's played it raw, but uh. like it's even better now because that one damage will still kill Surfer, um, and now Rockstar's at two damage, making him at three willpower. I mean, that is a great card because now you can just attack. Uh, you have another target to attack because. Big Tink's second ability, where she deals two damage, is so powerful in this kind of situation. Yep. Nikita not giving up hope. Going to simply quest for one here with the aerial. He knows four. that it's already it's already dead pretty much with that uh, uh, Tinkerbell on the field, so might as well get some value out of it. Didn't have the ability to sing any song, so that makes sense. You see, at least at least you use her before she goes. I have to say, in general, right, uh, Nikita is playing very well here. Yeah. Um, it was looking very un unpromising, very dire there for a minute, and he's really kind of started to stabilize a bit. Oh, interesting. Taking out the aerial, so that way the tank stays on board. Doing the two damage to the already damaged tank, so that makes him down to one damage. Does he have another big tank himself? That's interesting. I, I Again, these plays that we're seeing today, I, it, it takes away from the what you just, the straight Ooh, line that you the see. Rapunzel. That is a really good top deck from John here. Yeah. Oh, and then I believe I saw a whole new world too. So able to completely refuel the tank and get that Stitch Rock star. He also, John also drew a Stitch Surfer there. So that's just <laughs> a lot. Of, a lot of options. That is a just lot of up. good cards in hand. And gonna shoot another, another big another tank. tank. Oh, man, this is like you're. So what are you questing for here? You're questing for ten next turn. Yeah, yep. it's definitely got lethal on the board for sure. After as long as he quests that uh, Stitch Rock star, then he's got lethal on the board. Not fun for Nikita here. Again, if it, it depends on Nikita's hand, but at some point you got to start considering that you want enough time in game three. Maybe it's time to scoot. Yeah. Now, he is going to go ahead and quest with the stitch, bringing him up to ten. Most likely you're going to see the uh, big Tinkerbell take out the Rockstar stitch. Uh, and then put that damage on the smaller Stitch, slowing him down a decent amount, keeping his Tinkerbell in play, uh, and then kind of forcing uh, John to potentially do something about his Tinkerbell. Uh, but with John still having six lore after all of that, if nothing else happens, I'd, I'd just turn sideways and hope for the best at 18. And I think Nikita's kind of in a tough situation here because of what we were talking about earlier with the lack of removal. So if John starts to notice that, if he looks through that disc Nikita's discard pile and he says, okay, you have two or three big tanks, you got all four to grab your sword, you got fire the cannons, all in your discard pile. I don't have as much to worry about anymore and I can kind of just go wide and go turn sideways and win the game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely makes sense and it looks like we're getting a scoop from, from Nikita. Nikita. Yep, we are going to go to a game three here in the top eight. I think that is a wise choice by Nikita here. And uh, going to be interesting to see and now, uh, how with, this goes. With these uh, top eight, so we're uh, actually going to be able to see this last game finish out no matter what. Hopefully it doesn't take forever, but it will be a game that we do finish out. Uh, so we will see them, even if it goes just a little bit over that 18 minutes. Uh, we will see who the, uh, the winner is of this game. It will not end in a draw. And so I think that... Uh, should alleviate a little bit of pressure time-wise, but hopefully that uh, uh, that extra bit of comfort doesn't make uh, decision-making too easy yeah. uh, to the point of maybe uh, making decisions faster than you should, maybe that you shouldn't do. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, so it looks like the players are just getting ready here for this third game. Um, still has been a very exciting back and forth here for Amber Steele. Again, sometimes you have really slow, grindy matches, and sometimes you have really fiery, aggressive ones, and it seems to definitely be more towards the latter here for this round. Yeah. Yeah, Big Tink is a, a great, a great card. I think that we're going to be seeing Big Tink uh, for a while. I do think, though, as we go into the next set, Big Tink is going to have uh, a hard time with Resist. I mm -hmm. think a lot of what Tinkerbell does uh, is going to be completely nullified by these Resist characters and Resist decks. And I think with how much of a staple in the meta it is, I'd be really, really surprising to me if we don't see uh, an uptick and resist as we as we go into the set two. Yeah, and uh, I'm also really curious as a fan of Emerald Seal to see how it pairs with the new Cheshire Cat. That's my most exciting combo that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, there's definitely, and there's so many out the, just uh, looking, from the outside looking in at these cards, there's just so many combos that I can see being just absolute 
game changers, you know what I mean? And so, absolutely. Luckily, with Pixelborn, you're able to get on there and t- uh, play around with some of the new cards. And so, I've been doing that, and I, it's it's been fun. But you know, there's still a lot of stuff we don't know about, about what's coming about from uh, the next set. And I think mm-hmm. those unreleased cards are really what's gonna uh, be interesting to see. Yeah, for sure. Um, six days, six days, <laughs> six days. I think I, I do agree with you that resist is going to be a factor, but I just think Big Tank is just such a good card. Oh yeah. She's not going to stop being good all of a sudden. Yep. She's going to be. She's going to have a, a bit of a counter that you can kind of work into your deck if you so choose. But uh, mm-hmm. she's still going to be good enough to where you might want to have, or you might have to put that counter in, uh, and that's and that's important. Fun fact: uh, a Big Tink is actually the first rare I ever pulled out of any Lorcana. My very first. Ever. That's awesome. Yeah. So a pretty good first pull. Heck I yeah. Say. I think that that when I first got uh, packs, uh, I got eight packs, uh, and I told the guy at the front, I was like, I just want to pull that Tinkerbell card, man. It looks so cool. And yeah. I pulled it, and I was so happy. And then later on, I went to a tournament, and they were like, hey, I need that Tink. Can I can I trade it? And I almost traded it. But I was like, no, I think I like this card. And it was before I knew what those cards were, and, man, I'm happy I kept it because yeah. I still don't have my fourth one. For sure. <laughs> All right, it looks like uh, players are just about getting ready here. Um, going to be going into game three. We have 15 minutes on the clock, which, thankfully, in this, count, in this uh, matchup, uh, depending on how the players play it, um, is actually a pretty decent amount of time. So we should hopefully see a very fulfilling and fun game three here, and uh, we'll determine who our top four are. Yeah, and that's going to be interesting to see if uh, top four is going to be one- interested to split the prize or if they're mm. going to want to battle it out to the to all the way. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see what their choice is going to be with that. Uh, uh, it was looking like there was going to be a split for the top eight, and then uh, it did it did not go that way. So yeah. we're, we're very uh, very interested to see how it shakes out, and uh, I'm always here for for more matches. And so like if, if they if they want to keep going, I'm 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 ready for it. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, I think I think the higher you get, the more the more intense it gets. And I think that it's funny to me how the these late game matches here seem to kind of be going a little bit faster tempo. Yeah. It's uh again like we were saying earlier like there is a pressure there when now you have you have stakes on the line right all these players are going to win something it's just a matter of what are they going to win you know and, and the good news is at this point if you made it this far you're 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 walking away with a couple bucks you know, no matter what and I think that that's pretty cool you came out here you got to play a fun game uh, have a good time and you know you made a couple bucks doing it that's a good day yeah absolutely all right we're gonna get started here in game number three we're just seeing. Uh, a couple tur- first two turn plays here from Nikita, a Captain Hook, and a Stitch New Dog going a quest with the Captain Hook on turn two. Let's see if John has a play here on turn two. He's going to simply play a Stitch of his own. Not as strong turn two out of this deck, but definitely it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that there's uh, not a lot of turns to be had. I just you know you see your opponent doing the mirror match and able to do double what you just did. You're kind of like, oh man, I wish I had a Captain Hook on the field. Yeah, for sure. See if he has some kind of strong drop here for turn number three. Thinking a little bit, but going to just simply ink that Simba Protective Cub and play down that aerial, searching for that song. Going to get... Simba definitely getting a lot oh. less play uh, today than I thought he would for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, bodyguards in general. Looks like uh, he did whiff there on that aerial, unfortunately, but he's simply going to quest with the Stitching Dog. Go up to two lore here and uh, pass from there. Interesting that he chose to quest with the d- new dog but then keep the captain hook. He must really not want to give his opponent any any trade value at all. I mean, and that makes sense, right? I mean, we have a lot. Okay, so we our John does play Smash. That confirms that because we just see, I think it's probably a one or two of in his deck. Um, going to smash that aerial. I think that's the proper play. Trading the stitches, preventing any kind of rock star shift here. And uh, Hook by himself isn't a super great board state for Takeda. Yeah. Uh, to bring up the, the point I was making earlier was just that I think that a lot of players really are uh, in this tournament, as you get into the higher uh, level, are looking ahead to that point and just really kind of taking it down to like the very smallest amounts and not willing to give any inch. And that's what you have to do at this level or else you're just going to get wiped out early. And I think yep. that if anyone's watching and you want to pick up on tips on like, hey, what can I do to make my gameplay a little bit better? That would be one of the bigger tips that I would give you is, hey, you know, think about what what value is of that card and is it really worth getting that one lore? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Nikita here looks like he is going to 
had to ink that stitch Rockstar, which means he probably planned on playing it off that stitch, and without that uh, shift target, doesn't really want to have to work toward that six ink for that card right now. Uh, is that a second whiff? Oh, no, it looks like it is a whole new world, but damn, you don't really want that when you already have one in hand, like we yeah. said before. So if I do the same thing. If I pull that, it's going right back to the bottom of the deck. At least I get a chance for it later. Yeah, that is unfortunate. That's two aerials in a row here now. Um, so he is going to complete quest up to five, and... Uh, Pass the turn. Doesn't want to sing. Uh, uh, he didn't. He played the aerial, so he doesn't necessarily. Uh, couldn't sing the whole new world. But I wonder if he sings it the next turn, knowing that it could help his team, uh, opponent out. It looks like that might be a swords in his hand, so he might be just waiting out to see if he's if his opponent is going to play anything too crazy. If his opponent tries to go wide here, um, oh, oh, he's going to play a swords of his own. Not what we want to see. No, definitely not. That's gonna. It's gonna be a lot of, a lot of that momentum completely gone from Nikita out of the gate. And John showed a really good ability to control the momentum of the game last yeah. game. So, you want to have that early on as much as you can. You can tell John is very good at, uh, like, timing out his movements and determining which move is best to be, make here. And I think um, that's exactly what he did. Going to simply play down that uh, steel tinker bell again. That even if you don't have the big tank to shift into, you. She's so good at just cycling cards, and that four willpower is a lot more strong than you would originally think. A hundred percent. Really, um, some of the only low-cost characters that can deal with it is Gaston. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you, otherwise, you're going to have to deal with like trading into um, things like Simba, new uh, protective cub, and things like that, and it just gets messy. Um, because you don't really want to leave it on not dealt with, right? Because that's a constant four-ink threat of shifting into big tank. He's going to go ahead and choose to opt out of the grab your swords and use the whole new world instead. Singing it with Ariel specifically. Yeah, definitely probably the better play here. Oh, and he pulls a Rapunzel, which is huge. So he's able to potentially heal up that Ariel. That That is definitely a great card to pull. And John did have the big tink in his hand before that. So, so he was able to get rid of a good threat there. And it looks like John also had a whole new world. So... John's not unhappy. He planned on playing it, apparently, you know, obviously, but just not at that moment. Yep. Playing the Rapunzel, like you said, healing, drawing those two cards. It looks like he did draw a sword and a surfer stitch. That, or I'm sorry, that's a stitch new dog. Uh, that's a good top deck there, though. That that sword's definitely going to come in handy. Simply using the last of his ink here for his curve, playing out that stitch new dog, and maybe we will see it shift into a rock star or something. Maybe not. John has. A good chance to put a big tank down, but I don't know if he has it in hand since he lost it. So I'm wondering if he was able to draw into that. If not, that's a kind of that's kind of a a, a, a little bit of a buzzkill for John. But he okay, was he able did to pull get another one. That's really good. So he's able to use that and then shift into it uh, to attack the aerial, putting the damage I believe on the new dog to take it out, and he does, uh, leaving that Rapunzel with only one damage, but able to clear uh, some uh, potential threats down the road with taking that shift target away from him. Gonna simply quest here with Ariel for one. Both of these players doing extremely well at managing the threats of the opponent. Um, I don't think anybody's necessarily making any misplays here. It's just really gonna come down to who draws what cards, who has what advantage. Things like letting your opponent have a free Rapunzel for two cards is gonna come back to bite you maybe if you uh, are going to be in a race um, for card resources and um, resource management. Drawing cards is your most powerful thing you can do in a card game. So um, just letting that happen, and now you have a four-cost, th two-questing threat with four willpower still. Um, that's not fun. The good thing is you can potentially deal with it with Tink uh, with the four-power. Nikita has the grab-your-swords in hand. He's got some removal. He's going to use it, using the five, so he's able to get rid of... He's not able to get rid of uh, anything just yet, but he will. Yep, yeah, there you go. Trade into the Tinkerbell with the Rapunzel after using the Grab Your Sword. So at least then uh, it's going to just leave the aerial on the field and kind of bring everything back to a more stable state. He does have a Fire the Cannons, though. So with the one ink left, he could potentially, and there he will, do that. Uh, he's going to Fire the Cannons at Ariel, wipe the board. Great move out of Nikita. It brings him up five lower, and he is... Uh, cleaned up the board state, so uh, pretty even Stevens, and I think that was the right play. Absolutely. Uh, this is anybody's game in this current uh, board state. Uh, John going to play out that lantern, which will only help accelerate it. Um, if he has a couple of big threats like uh, Rockstar or Surfer Stitch or uh, even more big tanks, that Hades, God, that card is so good. It just when keeps it, when it hits, showing how good it is. Yeah, he's going to take, he now has a 
treasure trove of <laughs> choices here. Uh, looks like he is going to take the aerial. Interesting. I, it's a, it's a definitely strong. He's really uh, wanting the ability to sing and search to the deck through songs right now. Mm-hmm. I, I I loved. It. Uh, there were so many good options there. I was hard to pick a good one. I, the the right one, tech, quote unquote. Uh, but you know, definitely uh, good to have that many options. Absolutely. All right. Let's see what he has here. He looks like he has a couple options. He has Rapunzel. He has Surfer Stitch. Again, you don't want to play the Surfer Stitch without drawing the two cards. It never feels good. No. Okay, that's a pretty good play. You're going to play a middle uh, cost character like Beast. Get rid of that Lantern. Um, it would be nice, though, if he has the ability to ink and play a two drop here. Okay. I don't know. I can't tell what that card is at the end. Oh, I'm going to get rid of the Rapunzel and then pass. Cinderella, gentle and kind. Okay, so that's a four drop. Yeah, I think that you still want to hold on to that one just in case because he's running through his aerials pretty quick. Going to play a uh, Be Your Guest. Going to go ahead and choose to opt to take the little Tinkerbell. I'm not sure if he has a big shift tink target, but I, again... It, one of those choices where you think, okay, just a little Tinkerbell, no big deal, but with her able to cycle through cards and choose what you really want and uh, to play and keep, that that has a lot of value. And I think that, uh, again, kind of goes into that category of Hades and Cinderella of just a little mm-hmm. under, underplayed, undervalued. I'm going to play... I'm going to take the BR guest, even though he had the option to have a whole new world, and I don't think he has one in hand either, so... I'm going to simply ink it. For the baby tank. That's what he was really hoping for. And it looks like he is going to quest for one here with Hades going to two. Both players still at a very low lore count. We are now at four minutes in the round. Yeah, I still don't know how that, that Rapunzel play it seems a little bit uh, not in the best uh, best play. He could hit that Beast, could hit that Hades. That's three cards right there he just gave up by taking that Rapunzel and putting it in the inkwell. It just seemed like he had other options there. Yeah, there must be um, a thought process there, right? 100%. So we're just not 100% sure what that is yet. Going to play the Rockstar Stitch, and he's going to sing a whole new world with Beast. Again, that's the danger of letting uh, Beast live. It's one of those things where uh, I'm a little bit older, and so I'm of the MTV generation, and they used to have shows on there have little thought bubbles would pop up in here. <laughs> that's what they're thinking. I think we just need that for Nikita right now and see what see what his thought process is. I think that would be that would be nice. I think that might be uh, definitely a good visual aid. Yeah. Put that in the R and D slot right now. And get that get that work done. All right, so we are going to just see some basic uh, card drawing here with Simba. And Stitch Rockstar. But it, I could be reading that wrong. It looked like he pulled two cards, one for the Simba, one for the Rockstar, uh, and then chose what card he wanted to discard. I'm not sure if that is exactly how that uh, combination is supposed to be played out. I think you're supposed to you are supposed to discard, discard a card the... first, and then so he did have too many options there. Uh, definitely, definitely not how that card. Is supposed to be played 100%. Thankfully, the board state did resolve itself because he did discard the Rapunzel. Again, I find that to be a very odd choice. Um, no, but you are right. There is technically information there gained, so we should probably we would definitely uh, take note of that. But yeah, um, gonna play the Surfer Stitch and draw two here. I mean, this is this is hard no matter what, right? I mean, this is like a complete gridlock on board right now. For both players, that's that's what happens sometimes in this matchup, right? You you're evenly matching each other's threats, and there's no clear advantage on either side. Both players are making excellent choices in answering those threats. Ooh, big board from John and Nikita. Very interesting because that's the second Rapunzel he's gotten rid of, one way or another. He's gotten rid of two. Yeah, now. absolutely. Uh, and that's 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 sixty dollar card draw right there. You yeah, know, Rapunzels are not uh, a cheap card, and they're not a uh, uh, easy to get card, so it's kind of when you see complete no value out of it, you know. Some of I mean, the, I think that it's probably it's probably one of the best cards in the game. Yeah. But the but the problem is you need a good target to attack against, right? Yeah. So like, but he, 
he had that target though with Hades, and Hades was on the field, so it just seemed. The problem is Hades is it has a willpower of two, right? So he won't. You have to have him survive the attack to benefit from that. No, I was talking about John actually having the Hades, and then Nikita being able to attack the Hades with his beast, and then that would have put three on the beast and been able to draw the full three out. Got you. Yeah, yeah. Interesting choice. Oh, nice. A big tink coming down. Going to go ahead and put uh, one damage on everybody and take out that Hades. Here at one minute left in the round, these players are going to have to start making some tough choices. Going to swing here with Beast. Singing, Ooh. grab your sword. Just as the final dice counter had been put on the cards to tell him at one damage, he went ahead and added two more to everybody. <laughs> Now we have a three damage on Tink and three damage on Surfer with a going against a Beast Rockstar and Tink. Very, very big, uh, very big board on Nikita's side. Okay, we have a Surfer Stitch. Okay, it appears that there might be uh, a rule clarification in chat. We will get that checked out on. Um, going to ink the BR guest. And the only reason that I uh, bring up the uh, stitch combination is just because of how it plays on pixel board, um, where you have to draw and then make the decision on the draw and then draw again. Uh, and they're usually pretty up to date on their uh, rulings of Lorcana and how it's supposed to be played and update pretty frequently. Uh, and so I'm definitely, I, I, I see what Chad is saying and I'm very interested to look at that up myself just to kind of get a little bit of more clarification on it just because I still, I have not seen that happen yet. That's the first time I've seen it played that way. It does, it does not make too much of a difference one way or another. It's not like it's a game breaker that's going to change the course of this match, but it is interesting just to know how it should play out. So, um, again, we have a pretty hefty board here from Nikita. John has to do something here to have some kind of response. That is time in the round. So, um, going to be very interesting. They play until there's a declared winner. Okay, so we are going to see that, uh, that we are playing till there's a declared winner. So, um... We are going to just continue on here, and uh, John has to have some kind of answer to these threats. We got 10 ink. We got a lot to be. Uh, we can do with that deck anything we want as long as we have the cards in hand to do it. Uh, what he chooses to do, though, is going to be huge right now. With that Simba in play, it's a tiny body, but still a big, big threat. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to quickly uh, update Nikita's lore here to 8. Um, I wish I could know how many whole new words each of them had. So we actually do have their deck lists. Um, it does look like uh, they're playing four ofs. So it's uh, always a potential. We do know Nikita has one pretty close to the bottom of his deck because of the earlier aerial. Uh, so going to be interesting into the late game here. Yeah, I think John has played, I know he's played one, he possibly has played two. He should have, uh, you know, like I said, at least a couple more. He's going through his discard right now, and I see at least that one whole new world. So I actually don't know if he's played a second one. I think he might have all three uh, copies in his uh, deck remaining. And it looks like Nikita has played two whole new worlds. I think they heard the chat and were like, you know, let's go ahead and check our discard. We appreciate that, y'all. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So that Surfer Stitch is at 6 damage now. That could be relevant with the big Tink in play. Always something to consider. Another Lantern. Is that three Lanterns on the field? That is a, a, that's not the first time we've seen that today. We've seen it quite a bit. I mean, people like the ambiance on their field. It makes their <laughs> characters feel nice and lightweight, and uh, they're feeling good over there. Yeah, I think I think that uh, another Simba coming down. Haven't seen the Simba much. Used to seeing him just in the early game, and now the only time I've seen him really today has been late game. Late game Simba coming in hot to to protect and, and protect and serve. Yeah. I'm hoping to see more cards like Zazu and Nala coming up. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, let's sure. get all those other uh, Lion King characters. Okay, involved. we're simply gonna turn sideways here. Quest for four. Go to twelve. Say go. Uh, Nikita just going to try and take advantage of this lore lead and uh, 
just really I mean John has responses to these characters right I mean that that's a double surfer stitch here but I oof this is, a, this is a tough call, right? Because, like, do you start attacking in... Like, you could attack in with your own big tank, kill his, do two damage to something else, maybe maybe a Simba Protective Cub, maybe Beast. Or do you just have to really consider the fact that Nikita might not care, you know? He's going to be questing for at least three in that scenario, going to 15 next turn. Uh, you really kind of just have to start racing in the lore here. I mean, you're back, you're back by 10... At the same time, you just leave those threats unanswered, you're never going to catch up. It's kind of a catch-22 here for John. Going to be curious to see what he decides. Ooh, the Simba. Okay, so he wants to have his Tinkerbell still on the board. Doesn't want to trade into the Tink. What does he deal two damage here? I mean... you got to do it to the Tink, right? Oh. I, I'm thinking here, because I'm thinking he, his plan is to take his heavily damaged Surfer Stitch and maybe just crash that into the Tinkerbell. Okay. Yep, yeah. that's gonna, what he's going to do. That he's going to trade the Beast for the Aerial. And now we have a, we have a simplified game state... But again, yeah, you're up by two lore. Is he not gonna? But, he he yeah. put that search. Did he put that surface stitch out this round? I think he did. Yeah, right? he did. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, that that's a that's a great move from John. That keeping, is the right move. For yeah, sure. keeping the the momentum down on Nikita. All he's got right now. Uh, it looks like he has one card in hand, and I don't think that is the card he was really open for. This it looks is, like a BR guest. Yeah, this is John's opportunity. Oh, he does have more than one card, though. He is off camera, so it looks like he has two more cards in hand. This is John's opportunity to really turn things around, because um... Oof, Rockstar. Uh, that's not what you want to see. The more times Nikita gets chances to draw cards and extend this game, the bigger the chance that John... Oh, oh no! And then the surfer. Just forget everything I said. Jesus. <laughs> that is a huge play from Nikita with a five lore swing in the way in the in the wings, and he's gonna take out the big Tinkerbell with the Stitch Surfer, and now you just have. Uh, well, first of all, I mean it is a Stitch party on the board right now. Just all the stitches. We just <laughs> they're need all one, hanging out. Yeah, we just need a little baby Stitch, and we'll be the full set. Man. It's not quite. You're one short of lethal here, right? Yeah. But uh, it's still quite the formidable threat. Yeah, and and at this point, putting uh, putting 19 on the board, I mean, it might as well be lethal. Uh, I, <laughs> again, it's 17, 18. I I've never seen a 19 come back from from less than five lore. It's such a such a mountain to have to climb. So John really does have uh, his work cut out for him. I mean, surfer stitches here. Even if you're getting one back with Hades, I mean. He played Your the opponent. Hades, got the Surfer, put it out, but what did that help? That 8 willpower is just so brutal. Gonna quickly... Oh, he's gonna trash into the other Stitch, get rid of him. Oh, I don't know here. I mean, I mean that's the right move if you're John, but I think this might be too little too late. Yeah. Nikita can simply turn sideways. It really does look like he's just he's just prolonging at this point, but I mean it's not to say that you know he's not doing a great job at doing that. I mean he is really putting Nikita having no. to like really work for this win. Absolutely, um, it should. And there he is. We got the whole party, the whole Stitch family <laughs> on the field. <laughs> uh, yeah, John is a hundred percent putting in amazing work here. Both players just fighting their hearts out, trying to get that game three here. Uh, this is the very last moments of top eight. And it's unfortunately looking like it might be a little bit short here for John. Yeah, and Nikita's pulling into some pretty good draws there with the one drops there to kind of lengthen the board a little bit more. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I don't think he actually used the Stitch or the Simba for card draw off of the uh, Rockstar. I think he actually only used the card draw off of... Uh, Simba's ability. Simba's ability. Well, well, he just went sideways there. Maybe he did actually get the card draw, and I just missed it. There's no reason for him to go sideways if he didn't, so I'm assuming that he did get it. So if he drew off those cards, it did, he did get the, the turn on there. He just no, I think I think I think uh, chat is correct. I think he didn't use it. I think we were originally... I think he, he was turning sideways there to quest for two lore and go but to 19. Didn't he just play them, though? True. Um. Yeah, you did. He did. I'm not 100 percent sure what's happening here. Yeah, because he just went up from 12 to 17, so he must have drawn two cards, got rid of the the grab your swords, um, and he might have pulled three cards. And we just he also could have just simply played those two cards, um, and then drew one card off Simba. Yeah. So I definitely think that one way or another, 
that might wrap it up for this match here as we get ready to see what see what John has to has to say to answer back to that one. He has to have a pretty good answer. And he has to have it right now. I don't think there is I don't think there exists an answer, unfortunately. You know, this isn't something like red that plays be prepared. You you don't have any kind of mass uh, spot <laughs> removal like you do with blue, with Hades. That's a very uh, good point. John could actually triple whole new world here. That is true. <laughs> he has the ink and the characters to triple whole new world. Is that why he's counting the deck? If he does that, I will... I will freak that out. That might be the most legendary top eight finish if we can pull that Best off. Best play of the day. It's 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 up for grabs. Yeah, that would 100% <laughs> overturn the round one best play of uh, using Shield of Virtue to untap a tapped Elsa and sing Be Prepared. Oh, my gosh. I, I could not want that more now. <laughs> I would love to see that. He that does have the one insane. in hand, so he just gotta, he's just got to pull into it. He only used one. 15 in deck. All right. I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, John, please. Please make that happen. I think that that is a, 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 the best way. Let's do it. As he's got whole new world at the front. He's counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If he triple whole new world, it will deck out Nikita. Dear God, <laughs> this is a uh, this is crazy town. This is <laughs> absolutely crazy town. No way! Oh, he's getting oh he's he's counting ink up. What what is the play here? I can't wait. Okay, no, he doesn't. He must not have it, right? He's trying to draw into it. He put a stitch on there. He's trying to double. He had he had it the whole time. I don't know. I, okay, so he's not confident in the triple. I don't know if he's he might deck himself out, but he has to draw. He has to go into the turn of draw first, and playing another aerial. Interesting place. He's really is he. No, I think he, I think he's kind of abandoned that plan. I think he has. He's like looking. He's digging for swords. He's he's doing something. He's thinking like I can attack into the surfers. I just gotta into the rock star. I just have to have some kind of like double sword or something similar. I think that at that point with the amount of swords that have been played versus whole new world, I go for the deck out. Yeah, I mean that that seemed like a, a great strategy there. Um, you know, it, it is one I've never seen. <laughs> Would have loved to see, but yeah. So we were gonna go for some trading uh, on the board here. It seems. Oh, there was even a big tink on board. I didn't, I didn't even, even, I didn't I didn't even, even notice that was the there, giant tink but. over there. So even with a double grab your swords, he wouldn't have been able to take out half of that board. You know what I mean? You have a couple of your attackers there, but, I mean, you'd still not be able to take out enough to make it necessarily worth it at that point. What is he going to do? He's got a whole new world now. He's going to go ahead and give it a shot, see what he can grab. I see. I see there's some controversy in the chat. Um, it's really going to depend. I didn't count how many are John is in. Um, yes, if John has fewer cards than Nikita, he would lose. But uh, it's questionable to see if that's... Okay, so he's playing the grab your sword. I don't know if that's going to be enough here. It's definitely not. I mean, I so he can double into the surfer stitch, right? Sure. And he simply extends the hand. That is going to be the top eight round going to Nikita finishing out in a 2-1 finish. Very well played by both players. Absolutely excellent gameplay. You love to see it. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to Nikita for making top four, and uh, congratulations to John for making top eight. Thank you guys so much for a phenomenal top eight match.